a board meeting of May 9th, 2024. Um, we're here both at City Council Chambers and also via Zoom. So it is a hybrid meeting. At this point in time, uh, people at the City Council Chambers who want to make comment can come to the podium. Those folks who are um, uh, joining us by Zoom will need to uh, text their um, questions later on or also their comments, and then we'll read them out loud. I think everybody's in, Carolyn? Yes. Okay. So at this point, why don't we open up the meeting as our tradition is to um, public comment um, for items that are of interest to the public that are not related to the items on the planning board on today's agenda. And today there's just one item, which is a site plan review on a parcel at 74 Audubon Road. So if you're here for that, we'll get a chance Oh, and there's also a discussion about the old Springfield Road street and acceptance. And we're also going to discuss our planning board meeting format. So is there anyone here in the city council chambers who would like to comment about anything in the city? Please come on up. And if you just state your name for the record and your address, that would be great. And make sure this Press this button on the microphone. Make sure it's green. Oh, hello. Do you see it? Oh, is it green? Yeah. Okay, it's green. Okay. Well, I want to thank the council members for giving me an opportunity to speak. My name is Arnie Levinson. I live at 14 Hancock Street in beautiful downtown Northampton. I'd like to make some comments regarding the PMS picture. Main Street. I think that Picture Main Street is a misplaced priority in terms of its concept. The Gazette has featured articles about a lack of funding for education, layoffs of personnel, curriculum changes, and special education programs are about to suffer. Yet, despite this fact, the newspaper has also highlighted the need to build a resilience center and redo Main Street, which will cost millions of dollars. The contrast between want and need could not be more stark. PMS has been presented as an opportunity to address safety and environmental concerns. I question whether this plan is necessary. Pedestrian safety can be improved with crossing lights. Bike lanes already exist for access to the downtown and requiring cyclists to walk their bikes through the main street area would not be a hardship and it would eliminate the need for bike lanes. Second, I think it is time for the, for the town to insist that traffic laws be enforced. Speeding has become an epidemic, not only downtown, but also through the side streets. It is common to see cars race through an intersection to beat the light. It's rare for these cars to be ticketed. If Northampton got the reputation for being proactive in their pursuit of safety, it would help everyone. Third, most public works projects require more time to complete than estimated. Three years is the time allocated for PMS. Furthermore, over 50 parking spaces and 20 plus trees will be sacrificed. The effect on our downtown businesses will be devastating. So, the question needs to be asked if PMS is a need or a want. Our tax dollars are precious. I urge the city government to rethink these proposals and reopen the process for community input. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Levinson. And just as a reminder for folks, it's not the uh, board's place to respond to public comment, but we certainly take it into consideration. <clears throat> is there anybody that has, a, is there anybody else in city council chambers who would like to speak to another issue that's not on the agenda? Okay. I don't see any chats. Do you see any other no, posts? No. Posts, 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 posts. Um, okay. All so, right. So then we could move. Excuse me, but the chat function is not on. Thank you. Uh -huh. We understand that the city Zoom application citywide went through an update this week. So there may be a couple of uh, little glitches that come up, came up, and this may be one of them. So that's been corrected. If there's anybody in the Zoom world who would like to make a comment in the chat, we'll certainly read it for you. One, <clears throat> um, Jacqueline McCreener. Carolyn, your microphone. Jacqueline McCreener, Northampton, Mass. Um, I support Mr. Levinson's comments. There's strong opposition to the project by Northampton residents and downtown business and property owners. 2,000 people signed a petition against the project. The city really needs to host a joint city council planning board public hearing. All requests for such hearing have been denied to date. And that's the only chat item. Thank you. All right, last opportunity, and then we'll move on to our agenda items. Sam, glad to see you, buddy. So we'll hold off on the minutes till later. We'll open up our, sure. our site plan review now, which is to add a second unit detached on a parcel by Sarah Staub at 74 Audubon Road, map ID 10B-007. And we need a simple majority required four of our seven members. We have five here tonight. Um, is there a presentation by the applicant? Uh, yes, um, I'm Adrian Staub. This is my wife, Sarah Staub. Um, let's see, so I need to, do I need to share screen or how do, how do yeah. okay. Uh, all right, I'm a Mac person. So let's, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Um, I wanna minimize. I put it on here, but I need to, there we go. Okay, so now, all right. Oh, um, so then go back here. Go back here, share, and this. Okay, that was pretty easy. Okay, can, can you see my, you can see my screen, good. Okay, well, thank you very much for, for um, considering this uh, site plan. So we uh, live at 74 Audubon Road. We've lived there for 12 years. Um, uh, in Leeds, we um, uh, are are planning to build an ADU uh, for our daughter, who is um, newly pregnant and coming back to this area to to live with us. Um, uh, we are. Uh, let me let's see if I can get this second here. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so this is our our plot, which is 74 Audubon. Um, our house is, I'm gonna show a more detailed uh, map in a minute, but our house is is here, garage behind our house is here, and the proposed ADU location is at the location of the star. Um, our driveway runs here and there's a tree line all, all along here. So actually the, the proposed ADU location is behind the tree line and will be not very visible from the road. Um, we will have a, a, a drive that comes off of our driveway rather than a separate curb cut uh, to the to the street. Um, this is the that the plan in more detail. So here's our driveway. Here's our 
our house. By the way, I, I haven't done this before, so if if I'm not doing it right, just stop me and and uh, tell me tell. Okay, uh, so so uh, this this is our house. This is our our, uh, our garage schematic of our garage. Um, this is the uh, planned side offshoot to the ADU, and and here's a, a, a the ADU. Um, uh, which I will show you in, in a larger version of in a, in a, in a later slide. Um, uh, here's another view. Um, this is a image of our picture of our house from the street before all the leaves came in. Um, here's our driveway. The uh, here's a uh, elevation of the the uh, AD, planned ADU. Um, this is the side facing our residence. Um, uh, the what you can see on here is the planned sewer and water, which will tie into the sewer and water from our our house rather than into the street. Um, and now we have a, uh, a, a, a plan from National Grid to tie into electric, um, which will not require taking down uh, uh, trees, but just a few limbs, um, uh, small limbs uh, between the road and and uh, and the house. Um, Here's an image of our of our property taken from the back of our driveway facing toward the street. So the site of the proposed ADU is, is essentially here. Um, and then here is another image from the other end of our yard facing toward our house. And, and the, the site of the proposed ADU is, is about here. Um, sh should I stop for questions or should I? I'm almost done anyway, but. Um, okay, so so keep going. Okay, so here 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 are some here are the elevations. I think they're these are called elevations. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the side that faces our house is is this side. So this is essentially the the front door. Um, uh, the um, it has it's about a little over seven hundred square feet, um, all electric, um, uh, two small bedrooms. Uh, so and you can see it here from each of the each of the four sides. Uh, here is the yes. Could you just point out which of which side is facing the road? Facing the road. Okay, so that would be, I uh, Sally. The, I think it's the top right faces the road. The, this this side. Yes. Okay, but again, it's behind the tree line, so it's not necessarily visible from the road. But okay. is it? Uh, but this this side faces the road. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, any other questions before I continue? No. Okay. Um, so here, and then here's the plan. Um, this is the, the door, the front door from the driveway facing toward our primary residence, um, and mudroom, kitchen, combination, living, dining room. Uh, bathroom, two small bedrooms, and utility closet uh, with two hot water heaters, one for hot water and one for uh, radiant in-floor heating. So that's what we've got. Good job. Thanks. Okay. Um, questions from the board? So I think just to clarify, uh, if the entrance is facing the other house, that the long wall is actually the rear elevation, if this orientation is right. Just so you know, unless, um, so that patio area, is that what you're saying faces the existing house? That's right. It was so fit. So if you're, if you're looking at the, at the ADU from our house, the, the, the the patio area is to your right facing you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's this view. Okay. Right. And then So then the lower right would be the one that faces the street, I think. Mm -hmm. I think this yeah. is this is facing away from this. This is the, the side that faces away from the street. Right, but the left side of that picture. So that panel, right? So so in the lower right picture. Which I guess is what the upper left is, is what's facing the street then. Yeah, no, this is facing up. This is facing our house. Um, okay. 
just showing it off because it's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, I, it's not an elevation. It's okay. It's okay. Around the corner from upper left. Yeah. The door faces their house, and then the other side of the patio faces their backyard, right across right. the street. Yeah. Oh, I see. So I think it, I think yeah, yeah. I think it is correct that this is the side that faces toward the okay. street. But sorry. That... <laughs> and you don't have plans for a garage, a covered garage. No. I was a little bit confused by what you showed in your plans and on an earlier slide about the parking. One oh yeah. Seemed so, to show so three this, spots. Yeah. So that that's actually the, these X's indicate that actually it will contain only one. Uh, space oh, that the initial impression green that green things go we up misunderstood in the initial Sally correct me if I'm wrong about this we thought that that the ADU itself had to have three spaces when in fact the combined the two units combined have to have three spaces so we initially drew in three spaces here to satisfy what we thought was the requirement but in fact that isn't the requirement it, and so there will only be one space there and so is that one space going to be uh Hmm. Where's the one space going to be? One space going to be. Good question. Um, well, Sally, right there. I think. I think. I think this is this is what it will look like. Is that one of the ones here? What do you mean back here? Yes. Uh, I see. So you think this is the one that's going to going to be retained? Okay. All right. And so there's the part of the driveway closest to the street where there may be cars coming and going, not too often at all. But I think when we have three buildings, then we ask for some kind of uh, pullout. Uh, so driveway, right? Yeah. And it count as a shared driveway. It's one access for both units. <laughs> Caroline, can you remind us what the rules are for if there were not a line of trees there, I think we would not want the car to be effectively in front of the house and for the front of the house to be facing away from the road, right? Um, and the, yeah, I'm going to pull up that portion of the code um, because it is in the rural residential district. Um, there are different standards as opposed to urban residential district standards. So just to, um, I'll clarify that. Um, no, it's it's on a it's on a slab. In a um, in a utility closet. Uh, so that's here okay. I literally the building the uh, just I'm purely I'm I'm happy to be building someone at 800 square foot home and I don't actually think you have to have the electric hot water heaters um uh for what you want and i'm assuming for the rebates that you'd like to have you need more space than that so just keep that in mind okay thank you if you if you added like a very small utility room to this you could probably come close to getting a 24 to twenty five thousand dollar rebate Um, so just to answer your question, um, Jana, the the um, covered front entry in this district does not have to face the street, but the parking needs to be to the side. So where the um, initial X was, uh, there are two X's straddling, and so it would have to go to the side of the unit as opposed to between the structure and the road. Thank you. So this is just just so we're clear, you're saying if we go back to this one. Right. Where is it supposed to be? Which I, I'd go to the one above, and that was fine. This is good. Yeah. That's great. Right. This is correct. Okay. Yes. All right. So it's 
it's different than what was submitted to us here. So the the plan. This is a, a newer plan, or this is an older plan that we're seeing on the screen. So I'm just we just want to make sure that what we approved tonight is the one that's in, up on. Wait. So what, this is newer. This is newer. That's the newer one. Okay. And then you can just clarify that the parking will be to the side of the unit. Other clarifications from the board before we turn it over to the public? All right, at this point, we'll ask if there's anyone in the uh, audience here at Council Chambers who would like to speak in favor of the proposal or any opposition, any comments? All right, hearing none, we'll turn it to our uh the audience out on zoom i don't see any chat okay very good any other questions for the board pretty straightforward move to close public comment second okay motions were made by sam taylor seconded by Melissa to close public comment. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Which just means we can't ask you any more questions or any of your team that you brought in today. Um, so I, we don't really have any conditions other than that the parking shall be as demonstrated here on this plan to the side of the building, which is really between the ADU and the house. Is there any waivers? Um, for uh, traffic and the traffic mitigation, yeah. Waiving traffic mitigation because of the size. Yep. All right. Uh, I move to approve this project on Audubon Road, uh, waiving traffic mitigation and just clarifying that the parking will be on the side of the structure. Great. I second. Motion is made by Chris Tate, seconded by Jana White. Any discussion? All those in favor? Well done. You've got a new line of work now. Thank you so much. All right, great. So we'll move on to, can you just- uh, I want to do- Stop sharing there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we'll go back to Zoom. Thank you. Yeah. And then you'll get a notice um, when the decision is issued to the clerk and there's a 20-day appeal period. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, all right. I did well in one direction. And you can give them okay, here we go. contact Stop information sharing. about that. Um, I don't have the only the I don't have ANRs, but we have the minutes and the old Springfield Road um, uh, street acceptance, uh, accepting the layout. Good. So whichever one you want to do. Do those two okay. first. Um, the minutes from April 25th. Can I move to approve the minutes of April 25th. A second. Motion well, been made by Jana White. Was that Sam who seconded? Chris. Okay, Chris. Thank you. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the 25th? Unanimous. Thank you. And now the old Springfield Road Street acceptance. Okay. Um, so this is a um, mass out project to um replace the old springfield road temporary bridge that was installed 25 maybe 30 years ago as a temporary bridge um 
and uh, but in order to move forward um this this is a uh this section of road i'm going to share my screen sorry um was laid out decades ago as a county layout when counties used to exist and so um in order to have the work done um, I'm just going to get rid of this. Is everybody comfortable knowing where this bridge is? Um, Down by Arcadia. Yeah, I the, can show you that. The river dumps into the Oxbow, and there's a metal bridge there. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of guys and women fish down there <laughs> one way. I'll show you on the map. Um, I can find it here. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, so it's right here. So if I zoom out, the Oxbow, this is South Street. Um, and then these are the Meadows Farm Roads or um, Arcadia is down here. So this um, is impassable in the, um, it used to be in the spring <laughs> uh, many times. And um, so it's been sort of on the list to replace for um, over 25 years. <laughs> um, and so what needs to happen is that the city needs to accept the street before MassDOT can um, come in and make those improvements. And um, those are the plans. So this will be, so officially the board, planning board is charged with making a recommendation to city council for um um for this and then it goes to city council for as a uh, officially for a public hearing so you're just making a recommendation a recommendation a recommendation to accept the layout accept the layout mm -hmm. okay and, yep of the street right can we see that plan again yep thanks but it's not just the bridge at the street. It's the whole street from where to where? Um, hold on. Runs into East Hampton, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, these are the uh, plans here. So it goes. So let me zoom in on the locust plan so you can see. That's probably the best way to. So this section from Pinchin Meadow Road um, all the way to Combs Road. So basically, do you see the line there is East Hampton, Northampton line? Whoops. I just see Georgia. Here. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Why is this oh, dear. Okay, let me just move this out of the way. There, is that better? The screen is behind us. So this area in here, so it's this section. Got it. It's just um, not even the whole thing. It's just that, <laughs> that portion that's going to be worked on. And just, Carolyn, you know this probably better than we do. What are the implications when the city accepts the street? It doesn't mean that they have to bring it up to a certain standard. But certainly this is just a dirt road. It just means it's, uh, you know, it's maintained by the street. So if this, I mean, by the city, so if, um, for maintenance purposes, but it's been, always been a public way. It was accepted by the county. So it's not a private road and it never, it hasn't been since I think it was, I have that too. Um, so is the top one, the old layout and the bottom one's the new layout? Um, the layer, sorry. Uh, I'll go back to that one. Love to know the history of this when that stagecoach was running all the way to Springfield through back when it was New Springfield Road. Right. Um, it's effectively this this is just sort of the edge of pavement. That's what the light layer is. So it's not changing in width at all from the existing county layout. It's just transitioning from the way it was accepted as a county layout to a city layout. And is there anything like does Massachusetts Autobahn Society have to have an agreement to swap property or anything? 
No, because it's still, it's the layout of the road as it's always been. It's just was county versus city. Oh. So there's no change. Oh, it seems like there's a, like a couple more jogs in it than there were before. So, um, or is this two different sections? Oh, that's what you're looking at. So it continues. I thought there was a before and after. No, no, it's just, no. it's just broken up into two sections. Yeah. Gotcha. So his 1841 was the county layout. And so is, there's no particular width or condition or anything that we're looking at to say, yes, this meets the standards of a city road. Well, it doesn't because it's 33 feet wide, but it's a farm road. So it doesn't, it's not, it, you know, and we're not, and the proposal isn't to go in and make it a 65 foot, you know, road or layout, I should say. Actually, let me see what the dimension is. Because it's really the layout, not the, um, I'm sorry, I should have looked. Yeah, it's still 33 feet. So typically, um well, we have a range of right-of-way widths, um, but they're all wider than 33 if it's a public way. And the bridges stay in one lane. DOT had a public hearing, I know, on this. Right. So everybody could kind of weigh in on it. And right. On replacing the bridge, not so much the road, but replacing the bridge. Right. Okay. Um, is there anyone here who would like to comment on the uh, acceptance or the the recommendation from the board on the, the acceptance of this old Freefield Road by the city? Thank you. Uh, then, is there anyone in the uh, on Zoom who would like to comment on this particular change from a county road to a city road? We have one chat there, but that's for a, a later situation. Yeah, um, it's just a comment from the city engineer. Okay. Any other questions for Carolyn? So you're looking for a recommendation to the city council? Correct. So effectively, nothing's gonna change because it was public. It's just going from officially 1841 county layout till 2024 city layout. Who hasn't made a motion yet? You want a motion? Sure. All right. I will move, uh, let me see if I get this right, that we recommend to accept the layout of old Springfield Road as a city layout now versus county layout. Very good. Motions are made about Old City Road acceptance. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> well done, Sam. Motions are made by Melissa, seconded by Sam Taylor. Any more discussion? All those in favor of this recommendation? I see four in favor. Any abstentions? I abstain. You abstain. Okay. Very good. And one abstention. Um, can I ask why? <laughs> okay. 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 Because I don't, I don't quite understand what the point is. So. To accept public money. <laughs> I mean, city council. It's yeah. yeah. Okay. They're voting on it anyway. It doesn't matter what I think. Yeah. yeah. They don't listen to our recommendations, anyways. To All me. right. Very good. So we got through the minutes. We got through the old Springfield Road. So now we're going to have a little discussion about our, our meeting format. Um, you know, how we're doing hybrid um, some of the time and how other city boards and uh, the city council are doing it. Carolyn, do you want to give us a little background on um sure so the state is still allowing um um opportunities for public committees to to either stay all in zoom to stay um to go all in person 
or to have a hybrid format. And so initially when you all came back um, from Zoom land and came in person, because um, I think at the time you all felt like it was an easier interaction to discuss plans um, in person and originally did not take public comment, I think, and then um, adjusted that to allow chat um, your committee, your all the permitting authorities, all the permitting boards have a very have a different role from the policy um, uh, bodies of the other committees. So, for example, city council has one public comment period, and that's it, and then they run their meetings. Um, but the permit um, boards, um, of which you are just one of several, um, obviously have to take um, public comment throughout the course of an entire meeting. Um, and um, that public comment can be in writing. Um, it can be sent ahead of the uh, meeting. It can be um, in person. And so, to date, you have accept continue to accept in writing comments, and those in writing uh, comments um, are allowed by statute and have been since the beginning of time. So you've always had email correspondence from people about projects, you know, pre-COVID, well before. Um, and so there have been some folks who have asked to be able to um, make verbal public comments. Um, from Zoom as opposed to just entering written comments um, from Zoom or beforehand. Good. Yep. Good. You also, can you also give some context to the staffing situation like at City Council versus at our meetings? Sure. So and not only does city council just take one and done and they um, have public comment and then move on with their meetings, but they have specific staff just to run um, the audio and take minutes. And of course, we don't have the same type of staff. Um, so we're doing everything. Uh, and that's across all the boards. So zoning board, central business architecture, conservation commission. Um, we're not staffed the same way. So it certainly is harder to, um, um, for, from a staff perspective to, you know, handle all of that, um, in one meeting. Um, and also, I think you all know, you can set the rules any way you want. You can set the rules for how many minutes people speak in public comment, whether, um, it's in person or online, you can have different rules for, online versus in person. So you can sort of, you know, decide what works best for you all. As long as there's some consistency each meeting. Right, you'd want to keep it, yeah, right. consistent. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we could have a little discussion now among ourselves. I think there's perhaps people in the audience who are here tonight to talk about this. It's not a public hearing per se, but it's on the agenda. So we could open up to the public. See if anybody would like to speak to that. Um, yeah, that's up to you too. Yeah. This is just a yep. board discussion. Okay, okay with that board. So is there anybody here at city council chambers who would like to talk to this agenda item? Hi, come on up, please. And just your name and address. Sure. Me. Hi, I'm Jane Myers. I live at 74 Straw Avenue in Florence. Hi, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. So I believe that um, what it's important for the people on Zoom, if you have Zoom, to be able to speak themselves in um, so that they have full representation, at least from their voices. I, w I was on Zoom during a Conservation Commission hearing just before now, and people were visible when they were given the chance to talk, and they used their own voices. And they provided really helpful information in their own voice, with their own expression, that really informed the commission. Some of these were neighbors who could talk about the water table and everything in you near know, the wetlands. So if it had been, um, you know, and there's people who really want to be able to speak, but they can't come here, obviously, for mobility 
or other issues, or they may be out of town at the time or whatever it is. Um, so I really, what what's happened um, here, I've been here January 25th and I'm here tonight, is uh, the people who are in uh, Zoom can just send a chat. And um, then it gets read by Carolyn Mish and um, it gets, it's um, both that time and this time when I was here, it's just not the same. You know, I know the person who sent in a comment um, after uh, Mr. Levinson spoke. Uh, it was kind of, it just goes through fast. Um, sometimes the comments are, you know, maybe a criticism or maybe just some information. And if it's not in one's own voice, but is read kind of quickly, um, it just doesn't have the same impact. Um, I could have had trouble hearing myself. I mean, I know they could hear on mics, so they at least heard that, but it's just not the same. And um, the other thing is that um, uh, when I was here in January 25th, one of my, I found out later that one of my neighbors had sent in a chat comment that was summarized very briefly, and it wasn't really what he meant. And it was important. He was across the street from a development that was permitted. So I know the Conservation Commission, which is permitting, um, does allow video and speak, people to speak. And it really made a difference tonight in their hearing. And that's what I urge that you allow here. That I don't, it, That's my feeling. And that's what I want to suggest. Do you have any questions about what I said? Does that make sense? No, that all makes very good sense. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And just so you know, Conservation Commission is all Zoom. They're not a hybrid. Model. Right. We were, the, we were the first board, I believe, to come back in person um, after the pandemic. So we were kind of uh, testing things out for sure. Um, and the Conservation Commission still is. And zoning board is still only on Zoom. Um, Central Business Architecture is in person, although they've done a couple of meetings on Zoom recently just because of scheduling. But Central Business actually beat you back ah, to in person. Okay. <laughs> and Community Preservation? They have waffled back and forth. Waffle. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in City Council Chambers? And then, oh, come on up. Michael Kane. Um I was just wondering what's what was the rationale for not allowing people to speak in their own voice? I th think early on, at least for this, when I chaired the meetings, it was very difficult to to have uh, a, a body of people here that I was wor we were working with, the presenter, um, and then also to be having part of my attention up on Zoom. Um, also, we weren't able to, I, we weren't, I wasn't able to kind of monitor the Zoom comments the same way as if we could when someone's here at the podium. People, people were able to go on a little bit longer um, than we wanted and come back. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember some of those meetings. Um, so at least for this, for being the chair, it was a little, uh, let me say, fractured of the meeting for me. Um, okay, so yeah, I would would echo Jane's comments and and request that more public comment be made allow be allowed. Thank you. So there is one comment or maybe two comments here um, about this issue. One is from uh, uh, Benjamin Spencer. I live on Rust Avenue in Northampton. Thanks for putting the planning board meeting format on the agenda for tonight's meeting. I appreciate you considering full Zoom access for public comment during meetings. I think it will be much better for everyone to have full access to the meetings. Thank you. Um, there's another one that's from Jackie Balance from Florence. I think the chat glitch tonight was ironic and symbolic. Benjamin Spencer was right. Chatting to the planning board feels infantilizing for this 78-year-old retired nurse. Is there any more there? No. Do I see anything else, Carolyn? Um, I don't see any on mine end. Okay. Um, well, 
I like the idea of just moving back to Zoom completely and not having an in-person component. That would be a lot easier for me. It's a hardship for me to make it to these meetings in person sometimes. And if everyone's complaining about the representation on Zoom, let's just go back to Zoom. That's what I would vote for. I I guess I, I sort of agree in that if we're going to allow Zoom, we should just be on Zoom. Um, I think that there's a value in actual human interaction and, and talking and everyone being in a room and there's something about zoom uh which is you know like people can they they click on to hear themselves to i guess to make a comment and then they don't have to they can just click off and not be part of uh, a discussion or or understand something and i find that um you know it's it's hard to square that so i mean I, I guess i would i agree it is sometimes a pain in the butt but that's part, that's that's uh i'm willing to deal with that but i guess if we're going to allow for one we should just make it complete but i guess i would i guess i would think that it just should be in person so I do think there's value in if you, I mean, I understand, I understand mobility arguments. I think there's value if, if a project is important enough for you to make time to come to the hearing to, to talk about it. Um, it's important enough for me to come to this every time we have one to, you know, be a planning board member. Um, I think there's probably arguments about if we were on Zoom, that there's, you know, technological challenges as well for those people. Um, we certainly have technological challenges in the city council chambers many, many times that I think if we were all on Zoom, it would be a lot cleaner. Sometimes the computer gets turned off and you have, we're locked out of the room to turn the computer on. It's like a whole thing. Like we don't really have any technical support here in city council chambers. So I know everyone wants everything, but uh, we're doing our best and we're a volunteer board. So it'd be a lot easier if I could just uh, sit at my desk and yeah. log on at seven o'clock. And, and I guess that's open to us. And we've done that a couple of times when planning board members have, we've been here at city council chambers and a few planning board members have, um, been on zoom and i must admit a couple of times chairing that i i wasn't always recognizing the planning board members who are on zoom you know i miss the hand being raised or the comments made but uh that's certainly an option for us for someone like you chris who yeah has to travel and work late um and yeah and i i i guess hybrid meetings are here to stay because of the um, the whole kind of access that people now can have. I, I don't foresee a day when um, the city will say, okay, we don't need to have a hybrid meeting or Zoom participation. Um, I think it's just where we are now. So we do have to kind of learn to do, do our, adapt to it as, as best as we can while still being effective. I will say we've had when these hearings are well attended, the folks in the room can't hear us, you know, and they're like, your microphone's not on. But of course, these microphones are for the Zoom people, not for the in the room people. Um, so it's just. I mean, that is supposedly getting fixed. Okay. Uh, There's just a lot of technical open media. challenges yep. that we have. Yeah. So it's not like, I don't know, we're trying to tick people off here. Yep. I don't know. Yep. I do not have fond memories of our days on Zoom, I have to say. Um, I found the tenor of the, con it was, um, I mean, and I was not chairing at the time, nor have I ever chaired, but um, 
uh, mediating between people, people kind of speaking back up and talking directly to the applicant instead of on the board, trying to sort of get a sense of where my other board members were at, who's even in the room, where are they, how do they feel? Um, I, I found it sort of harder to pay attention, harder to follow along. Um, so I agree, sometimes it is hard to show up here, but I feel like when I can show up, I'm a better and more engaged member when I'm here than when I'm online. And so even though that is harder, I would much rather be here with all of you in the same room than on Zoom, because I just don't think that, speaking personally, I'm as good of a board member on Zoom as I am online. Um, I think across the board, everybody feels like all online or all in person are easier and hybrids the hardest. How do you do it? How do you do it well? The technology issues, is it equitable? There are always going to be kind of hiccups along the way. Um, I guess I'm in favor of continuing hybrid and is there a way that we can improve it without increasing the burden on Carolyn, because your role here is very different um, than like what the council clerk's role is. You're much more substantively engaged in the content of the meeting, and it doesn't feel fair to be asking you to fix, do even more technology fixing than you're already doing. So I'm not really sure how to balance all of that. Um, I think one possibility that somebody had raised was, could we uh, so when we had the joint hearing with um, Legislative Matters recently, they were sort of doing one person in person, one person on Zoom for comments, kind of toggling back and forth. And could we not do that and say, okay, all the comments in person happen, then all the comments on Zoom happen so that we're not trying to go back and forth and we're sort of doing all the tricky tech stuff all at once might help a little if we were actually allowing people to speak um and maybe setting a time limit and if somebody had more to say then they should make written comment ahead of time i don't know if I, I it's hard for me to envision if that would help but maybe yeah i i mean it looks like you're directing to me so i mean i'll respond that um you know i think if you were to take comment from zoom that that probably makes sense to think about um having just grouping all the comments together um, from Zoom, you know, after you've done in person or vice versa, as opposed to going back and forth. Um, and um, certainly um, time limits, I think, make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the other pieces, it doesn't... Uh, you know, there's nothing that says you can't try something and then try something different. You know, it's, um, there's not one answer, I think, and it doesn't, there's not one that fits every single board. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't, I would encourage you to think about it in those terms that you sh shouldn't feel like this has to be a forever change, but you could try something and then swap it out if it doesn't work. Yep. You can do something for six months and then reevaluate that mm -hmm. in six months' time. I think a lot depends upon the, the kind of hearings that we're having. Um, tonight's hearing would have gone very well with a couple of people commenting from Zoom, you know, because it was just so straightforward. But other ones um, have a lot more give and take with the applicant and the abutters or the applicant and the interested parties, that mm -hmm. presentation team. We have to be mindful of that. Melissa? Yeah. Um, in general, I think I'm aligning um, with the sentiments that um, Jana made. I have had the opportunity to chair um, a couple times, both on Zoom and in person. And so I 100% um, on Zoom. Um, well, it was also we were in the middle of COVID, so there was a lot going on. But um, I uh, prefer, my preference is to be here personally. Um, I, for the same reasons, I think it's important and uh, I come here and um, I like to engage with the folks that are here. Um, when we have, you know, here we have folks coming to the podium and, and you know, and we have some sort of structure to it. Um, if we have a 
um, a hearing with a lot of attendance online on Zoom, it does get challenging to monitor all of that. And we don't usually just have one hearing. We have multiples usually. Um, so I would want to see a little bit of, uh, I mean, I certainly don't have any issue with somebody saying something in their own voice. Um, I also know that when we get um, uh, comments ahead of time and we all read them, I mean, I understand them completely. I don't think that I need to hear them in somebody's voice. I understand how that feels better to the person making the comment, but, you know, we're here to hold a whole lot of technical information as well as public sentiment and public comment at the same time and make sense of that. And that's what we do. So to me, I get it. If you send us a chat or you send us an email, I understand where your sentiment is. Um, I don't, but if we want to allow people to speak in their own voice, um, we just need to um, have some management structure about that because it can get a little crazy. Thank you. I, I again, just worry that if people think, so if we're full hybrid, even now, hybrid on Zoom with the chat function and then something doesn't work, you know, they thought they had that avenue available. So maybe they didn't make the effort to come in to this hearing tonight because they're like, oh, I can make my comment on chat and then there's an update and the chat doesn't work it's like it's always you know people feel disenfranchised for some reason because we have technical issues which again like we're not really like staffed or we don't have a lot of this available so i'd rather just not have any hybrid either go full zoom or full in person and so people don't have to feel disenfranchised when the hybrid option whatever it is doesn't work I mean, I will say also the Zoom doesn't work all the time either, you know. I mean, we had a difficulty with another meeting where um, I, the Zoom linked and it was just dead. <laughs> we, had a, we had a hearing once when the power went out in Leeds and a whole group of people just couldn't interact with the meeting. And so we had to continue it. Yeah. Um, and that's going to happen. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd be willing to 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 stay with the hybrid and allow people to come and make comments um, in their own voice at the virtual podium. Um, and again, I think by grouping them all at the same time um, and making sure we're clear about our instructions that people don't, as we are here when we have very full meetings, please um, don't repeat your the, the previous speaker's comments, speak to something new. And then we track all of those, the, the pattern of uh, questions, and we group them and we answer them as a board um, and allow people, again, people are going to want to come back to the podium one more time, and we allow that here, and we'll just have to, you know, do that as best we can and sometimes say, okay, that's enough for um, the public comment. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, I think um, I, I think it's worth uh, – it's worth a shot again to to try it for you know six months, say, um, and keep track of how it's working well and where it hasn't worked well. Um, but I think we have to we have to figure it out um, so that we can continue to get a lot of participation. There's no doubt that the participation is good, and sometimes, as Sam mentioned, you know, people's attention certainly comes and goes when you're on Zoom. You don't need to always be at the monitor. Um, with your video on so and we can talk about those nuances I think when people speak they have to have their video camera on um, and then maybe the city council has some of those protocols in place not yet no I don't think they they don't require video to be on yeah I mean, the yeah problem is the video is that what we found when we were saying is that sometimes the bandwidth like yeah. radio, it just didn't work Right. right. Yeah. But it works when you turn your video off and yeah. you just have audio. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, there are a couple more comments in chat. I don't know if you're ready to. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, 
Jacqueline McQueener, Northampton, thank you for adding the discussion of the board's meeting format to the this evening's agenda. Equitable access to open meetings is very important to uphold uh, democracy and transparency in government process and to encourage and discussion between city officials and the public. As residents here in Northampton, we do not take these meetings for granted. I deeply appreciate this speaking um, with members of the planning board at these meetings. Momentous decisions are made here. Please note that not everyone can attend planning board meetings. This may be due to health reasons, disability, um, being caregivers, or having limited transportation. The reasons vary as to why maximized access is vital and appreciated by the community. I strongly urge the board to adopt the same rules for uh, remote as city council currently in place. You all received this same, uh, very similar email already today. Um, uh, sorry, whoops. Okay. Um, Catherine Martone Florence, hybrid meetings allow all citizens' voices to be heard and to participate. It's uh, in person only limits input. I request that all be allowed to speak with their own voice. Let me just make sure. Okay. I think that's all of the chats. Yeah, so I appreciate you describing before the difference with the city council meetings that there's all that public comments. This happens once and then it's over and done with. And then every time the city council talks about a different agenda item, they don't open it back up to the public. It's, you know, just amongst them. So uh, ours is vastly different than that. Mm -hmm. um, sure, come on up again. Um well, just what you just said, Mr. Floyd, um, the city council is a lot of people, right? All the councilors and everything. Um, you know, I wonder if you might want to compare it a little more to the Conservation Commission, which is smaller with um, where they do. In other words, um, it's not as complicated. And they're, um, if I, they do it, I think they only do it on Zoom. I don't know. Right. But I mean, I can see why you're um, why you're daunted by the idea of the city council and how they do it but in a smaller group like this and i i think what they do there tonight is you know the chair would say you know if the councils were on zoom i mean if there's commissioners are on zoom uh any comments from commissioners and then sometimes a, a person uh a, the public might want to respond to a detail in a plan or in in and they raise their hand, but they they're not recognized till all counselors speak, and um, they are allowed to speak later. It, that's your decision. But I mean, um, I think with a smaller group, it might be easier than with a city council because it's just smaller. And um, I just um, I do hope you'll consider the idea of voices. Um, so anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I think it can, I think you guys can handle the issues to it. Thank you. So again, an all Zoom format for Conservation Commission. Yep. Also, we should be a board of nine members plus Carolyn, although we're so that's the same. Yeah. Under <laughs> staffed, under on the board, under right, under volunteered, under volunteered, right. But we are currently a board of seven plus Carolyn. We're just missing two people tonight. Right. We should. So we're not as small as we look. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Chris, I think you made a really important point that, I mean, the technology issues we know exist, and it's great that Northampton Open Media might come in here and mess with things, but just like the Zoom update, I bet some other new stuff will go wrong once they fix yeah. the old problem. So, you know, if people who want to make sure that they are heard coming to council chambers, if we're still doing in-person meetings, is always going to be the best guaranteed way for that to happen. And it's not some, you know, malfeasance on our part. We our technology breaks like everybody else's and there's no IT support to call at 8 p.m. So either here or on Zoom. So uh that just is what it is. To me, I feel like any hybrid um, solution has to has to be clear that the in person is kind of like this is this is the hearing, and anything else is like a bonus. But it might not work tonight. I mean, we've had it's I don't know. It's happened maybe six or eight times where there's been like some sort of technology thing. Yep. 
and again, it's yeah, it's seven p.m. There's no there's no technical support. Carolyn, you do a great job. Most of the times you can figure it out, but I'm sure people are sitting there at seven fifteen saying like, "Where's the meeting? Like it's not here." And you know, so I don't know if we can kind of state that we're an in. And I think that's kind of what we do with the chat. It's like we're an in person board, but as a courtesy, you can watch live and you can interact in some way. But like if if your impassioned voice is super important, like come in. You know, yeah, I'm a caretaker too. Like yeah. my kids are home alone right now, so I can be at the yeah. at the meeting. Like so that doesn't really, you know, I don't know. Do you, I mean, the other thing you can sort of um, land on um, a possible solution and then when Stacy's back and we're actually going to be getting a new member um, can sort of finalize um, that. Um, so, or you can start trying now, you know, you could agree to for the next couple of meetings to do something different how is our uh, agenda for our next meeting is on the 23rd i think there's one item one item mm -hmm. and do you think david will be back and probably stacy will be back yes i think so so and i don't know about the new member but at least then david and stacy could weigh in and we could think about this and talk about it one more time we there's no timeline for us to change our yeah. protocols now so right i think that's a good suggestion but stacy and david come in too um i think we've I, I i understand from a lot of people in the city that they would like to be able to have full access through zoom um and i get that and i know now that it's become so so much accepted in our society it's hard to kind of walk back from that um yeah, it is amazing pre-COVID, right? Or that would not have been a consideration, but now it's like you're you're circumventing democracy if you don't allow yep. Zoom participation or ADA. Or guy. No one, no one used Zoom, right? Like four years ago. Yeah, yeah. Think of it like the self checkout line. There's a value, but there's also a value in just being with other human beings and that's why you know i'm in northampton and not you know a massive city someplace and it, it just doesn't I, I think that it's like that we are hum, humanity is meant to interact in person with each other i mean like half these people would talk about you know, kids need to go and spend spend less time on a screen and disconnect from the internet and <clears throat> yada, yada, yada. And you're like, that's all true. Yep. We need to be in person with each other. And that's democracy. Like, I think people are confused about equity and democracy because those are not the same thing. All right, so we okay? Moving this a little bit to... Two weeks from now, we'll try to close it up then after hearing from Stacy and David, and hopefully the rest of us will still be able to come. I just have a... We do it on Zoom. <laughs> I have a question to pose, and I, I don't mean to make this conversation more complicated, but um, it seems to me like part of the reason... So right now, the way that this works is that if a planning board member wants to come to a meeting, we do have to come here in person. And part of that is because the way that we're managing online, I guess an open question is if we're going to allow other people to participate in a different way online, would we also allow board members to join online? Some of us here and some of us online. I, that's that's a question that I'm posing. No, I don't, I don't think, Jenna, there's an assumption that every board member has to come here in person. I right think right now, right now, yeah. yeah. Join now, we can't. You can witness online, but you can't participate. Mm -hmm. But you can't participate mm -hmm. and vote. No, that's why if we're on vacation or anything, we can't yeah. call. We can't call in and participate in the meeting. So that that could be up for discussion yeah. as well, and it could also be that. Um, yeah, I mean, again, you can sort of create your own rules. When did that? Since the beginning, yeah. Yeah. I've always been in from Cape Cod on a couple of meetings. I think you just listened, though. Yeah, you yeah. You didn't vote. Yeah, you didn't. Because that's not in our 
Are there any like state statutes or anything? Yeah. No. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so that's just something that the planning board kind of informally. I think it was an equity thing, right? Well, so if you're yeah. not letting the public speak, then the board members should be in person. Yeah, it was chat only. Okay. Yeah. It was just chat only and you can't vote via, via chat. Right. Okay. But then if we actually might be a statute issue, it was during, um, wasn't there an issue with voting, uh, like having new to roll call votes over zoom. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so I don't think you could vote over chat. So I think that's part of it. Okay. That is actually a legitimate. Yeah. yeah. Issue. All right. Sure. Well, that's a very good, um, point. So thanks. Cause in, in Chris's situation, mm -hmm. I'd much rather him, um, engage in the discussion by zoom. Um, they not be here at all, um, for sure. So um, I think we should really look at that. Yep. Not just for Chris, but for... Sure. But then if you're counting on me for a, uh, for a quorum and there's like a technical problem with Zoom, then there's yes. no right. quorum. Right. And yeah. then the applicant who came in... Right, but that can happen anyway. Like yeah. if somebody has an urgent matter at the last minute, you know, and we have to... You shut down the meeting because of that. And you're the hearing yeah. for the next time. Yep. Yeah. Does Zoom problems count as an act of God? <laughs> um, if you want to call whoever, name the person, Mark Zuckerberg, God, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much for coming tonight, folks, and sharing your thoughts. Did you want to speak at all to the... No, I was just here for the Audubon Row just to observe what was going on. Ah, Okay. All right, great. All right. Um, any other matters that to come before the planning board? So we're going to bring this so that if they wanted to come next time and participate, we're going to talk about this next. Yeah, I can put it on the agenda again. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you get announced next week? Oh. What? What was I going to announce next week? What's happening next week? Oh, the bike bike week in Northampton. Oh, like that? Yes. There's a flyer out there. A lot of things happening. We really want folks to come downtown um, with their bicycles. There's a lot of events happening. There's a bike party. There's a, a bike happy hour at Progression. There's something at Northampton Bicycle. Wednesday morning, there's a bike commuter community breakfast. Um, a lot of Northampton high school students will be there. Oh, 25th year. Oh, this event. 25th year. The mayor will be there. Some legislators, um, free bagels and lukewarm coffee for everyone. <laughs> um, one of the big things we're trying to do is um, let businesses know that shoppers come to Northampton by bicycle. So a number of uh, local businesses on Main Street are giving discounts to if you come into their shop or the restaurant with your helmet. You get such and such 10% off or a free French fry or something like free that. No. <laughs> it's one for <laughs> So yeah, we're really trying to generate that that kind of uh that kind of interest downtown so that folks um, you know, and the long run is so that we know that shoppers do um come into town with bicycles that when I come in on a bicycle, I'm freeing up a space for someone who can't use a bicycle and they want to park closer to um a store. So that, Carolyn, we also wanted to mention a little um, thing about voting at that uh, stand the councilor brought up about associate members. Oh, really? I didn't realize that was a, an issue, but okay. Yeah, yeah. just because I didn't realize it before about associate members. Stacy's not here. Yes. Do you want? Do you want me to try to explain? No, it? I can explain it. So uh, just um um. Going back to the Wayback Machine, when you first um, became members, associate members um, vote in place of full members. So um, seven full members, two associates. Um, associates can participate in any conversation and talk um, about any hearing item, but their vote is not counted if the full complement of seven are here. And um, associate members are not by statute allowed to um vote on the master plan so approving adopting the master plan or um subdivisions so new road um, permits subdivision permits 
So we only have one associate member now, which is Stacy. Right, but the mayor is going to um, recommend to council that she move up to full member. Yep. Um, I was mistaken. I thought a, an associate member couldn't vote on a special permit also, but I'm wrong. They can. Um, so if, in fact, we are short the full complement of seven full members and there's an associate here, the 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 chair, I think, is supposed to say, okay, today Stacy is stepping in to vote because we don't have a full complement. Um, but normally, if we had seven members and a, and a motion came up to be voted on, then the associate member wouldn't vote. Correct. Right. Or it just wouldn't be counted. So in in the heat of moments is from yeah. over various projects and in time, you know, I'll get to the vote and I'll say, oh, there's eight. OK, so I'm just going to scratch yeah. the associate. Um, and then, of course, we've been down so much that the associate Stacy always votes. Right. So right. we haven't had yeah. seven full. Right. So you yeah. for a long time. <laughs> right. A moot, moot point. Right. right. OK. And we right. never get subdivisions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Except yeah. one was a filed, but they might withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I do remember that from back in the aughts when there were a lot of subdivisions <laughs> that the associate members were on this fine line yeah. of voting or not. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for remembering that. Okay. Um, so pull out your rusty bikes from the basement and the sedge and come on down next week. Okay. I've got extra bikes if anybody needs one. I, I have a bike that's my size, but it's really nice to pull those by. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of bike week. <laughs> yeah. Sam's going to go down there with a price tag on his I, bike. I have a dual bike trailer for like toddlers if anyone out in Zoom is interested. <laughs> or dogs, <laughs> small dogs. Dual. This is bike not bike. part of the agenda. <laughs> so you can close any breakfast. I bet you could sell it. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion's made by Jenna and seconded by Sam Taylor. Any discussion? Can we do a roll call? We should do a roll call so we remind ourselves how crappy that is. All those in favor of a journey, God. <laughs> 819. <laughs> well done. Thank you, folks.